hello friends today we are going to see the trick to find time constant of rl circuit so without wasting our time let's start with the basic formula that we all know about rl circuit the basic formula for time constant of rl circuit is l by r okay but let me tell you from now onwards we are going to say this time constant formula as l equivalent by rth the reason we'll see in the sum okay and also this formula is only valid for first order rl network note one thing if you have a rl network of higher order then you have to go by laplace transform to get your time constant okay so we will see all this thing into the sum okay so before we move to the sum first let us see this why we say that the time constant of rl circuit is l by r okay so the reason for this is this one okay we all know that the voltage across the inductance is vl which is equals to l di by dt okay if we write the unit then here for vl we will have volt for time being let us write this l as l only the unit for i as ampere the unit for t it will be in second okay so if we keep l here and the rest of the thing if we take to this side we will have l equals to volt into second upon ampere okay and let me tell you this is nothing but your henry okay so we you know that the unit of inductor is henry okay and this henry is nothing but voltage into second upon ampere okay and for resistor it is v by r basically voltage upon ampere okay and now if we take the ratio of this l by r so here we will have l by r is equals to volt into second upon ampere upon volt by ampere okay so this volt volt got cancelled this amp amp got cancelled and we have only second okay so that's why the time constant of rl circuit is l by r okay if you take the ratio r by l you will have one by second okay which is not the unit of time constant okay so that's why we take l by r as a time constant this is the one reason we have another reasons also like if you take the laplace transform you will get e raised to minus t by tau form and tau is your time constant okay so if you observe it carefully it will be l by r for all first order rl circuit okay so let's see the contents that we are going to discuss in this video first we will see the trick by which we will find the time constant with independent source then we will move to dependent source and at the end we will see how to calculate the time constant for second order rl network okay so stay tuned for this okay so let's start with the independent sources first okay so here this is the first sum and we have to find out the time constant for this okay so here if you observe this circuit carefully here we have independent source which is nothing but your independent current source which is of 1.5 ampere and the switch is being closed for t equals to zero okay so we have to find out the time constant of this circuit okay so first let me tell you the time constant is only valid for t greater than equals to zero okay so if we will always find time constant for the circuit where the time is greater than or equals to zero okay so for t greater than equals to zero the circuit will be transformed into this basically this switch will be in closed position okay so this is the final circuit for t greater than equals to zero and we will find out the time constant from this circuit only okay so as we all know the basic formula of time constant is l by r okay so basically we want l as well as r okay as we have discussed we will always say l as l equivalent and r as rth okay why because in the circuit you will get multiple inductance as well as multiple resistance okay so always you have to find l equivalent and rth okay it is not necessary that you will always get one resistance and one inductance okay so here in this circuit you have only one inductance so you will have l equivalent as l which is nothing but 15 milliampere but now here you can see you have multiple resistance so basically you have to calculate rth for this okay now the procedure for calculating the rth is that it depend upon the type of the circuit okay so here you can see this is a circuit with only independent source okay as we have seen in the thevenin resistance video that for the circuit where we have only independent source then we have to just eliminate the independent source and we have to find out the rth okay so here also the procedure is same but the only thing is we are going to look for rth from the position of the inductance okay so here you can see here the inductance is present here okay so we are going to look out for rth from this end okay and we are going to eliminate this independent current source to eliminate the independent current source 
we are going to open circuit this current source so we will have only this circuit okay now we have to find out the rts for this circuit okay so here you can clearly see in this circuit this 10 ohm and 10 ohm is in parallel so the parallel equivalent resistance will be 5 ohm here this 5 ohm and 10 ohm will be in series so at the end their rth will be 15 ohm okay so here you can see your l equivalent is 15 milliampere your rth is 15 ohm okay so if we take the ratio basically l by r we will have 15 milliampere upon 15 ohm is equals to 1 millisecond okay so from this sum what you have learned that always we have to find out our rts from the inductor and okay so basically we have to open the inductor and from that side we have to look out for our rth okay so let's see more sum such that we will have a clear idea okay now this is the modified circuit of the upper one okay here in this circuit it was that here we were having 1.5 ampere now we have just modified the circuit with independent voltage source with the value 1.5 volt and the rest of the circuit is same okay so this is the circuit is for t greater than or equals to zero where you have a switch in the closed position okay now again we have to find out our time constant okay for time constant we will require l equivalent as well as rth okay so for l equivalent here you can see here we have only one inductance so our l will be 15 milliampere now the main part remaining is to find out the value of rth okay so again we will look out for rts from the inductor and and we will eliminate this independent voltage source okay so to eliminate this independent voltage source we will just short circuit it by for independent voltage so you have to short circuit because the internal resistance of independent voltage source is zero ohm while for independent current source it is infinite okay so that's why you replace independent voltage source with zero ohm and your independent current source with infinite ohm basically by open circuiting it okay so here we have independent voltage source so we are we are going to make short circuits so if you see this circuit carefully here you have this resistance this resistance parallel with this short circuit branch okay so we can say that now this two resistance will become redundant why because if you take the parallel equivalent of these three resistance you will get zero ohm okay so basically you can say these two resistance are replaced by short circuit okay so at the end we will have only 10 ohm as our rth okay so we get our rth as 10 ohm we have l equivalent as 15 milliampere okay so our tau will be l equivalent by rth which is nothing but 15 milliampere by 10 which is nothing but 1.5 millisecond okay so now you must be crystal clear how to find time constant with independent voltage source okay now let's move ahead with the dependent voltage source or current source okay so now this is the third sum where we have dependent source also okay the procedure will be same but there will be some twist okay so let's see that okay so here this is the circuit for t greater than equals to zero and the question is same basically we have to find out the time constant of this circuit okay so for time constant we have the formula l equivalent by rth okay so here in this circuit we have only one inductance so our l equivalent will be simply l which is nothing but 2 and re okay now the question is about rth okay so for rth we have to check what type of circuit it is okay so here you can see this is a type 2 circuit as we discussed in the thevenin circuit video that for type 2 circuit basically where in the circuit you have dependent voltage source as well as independent voltage source you have to eliminate the independent voltage source as well as you have to put a voltage source of vdc and the current of idc from where you have to find out your rth okay so we have eliminated this independent current source by just opening it and we have connected a voltage source of VDC with the current flowing from that voltage source as IDC okay so this is the final circuit from which we have to get our RTH okay so here from this circuit if you observe carefully this IDC and IX are in opposite direction so we can write this 2IX as minus 2 IDC and the rest of the circuit will be same okay now if we take the KVL what we will get minus VDC minus 2 IDC plus 5 plus 5 as 
10 into IDC equals to 0. Okay, so if we simplify it, we will have BDC is equals to 8 IDC. Okay, so if we take the ratio of BDC by IDC, it will be RTH, which is nothing but 8 ohm. Okay, so this is the procedure by which you find out the RTH where you have dependent source as well as independent source in the circuit. Okay, if you have only dependent source, then this is the type 3 circuit. Okay, so for that, you have to assume 1 volt voltage source or 1 ampere current source and you have to find your rth okay now coming back to this circuit we have find out l equivalent as well as rth successfully so our time constant will be l equivalent by rth as 2 by 8 which is nothing but 1 by 4 0 0.25 second as our time constant okay so by this you are now clear about how to find time constant when you have dependent as well as independent voltage source okay and now just take a short homework here you have to replace this 10 ampere current source with 10 volt voltage source and you have to find out your time constant okay so please comment your answer in the comment box okay i will be waiting for your answer now let's move ahead to this fourth sum okay so this is a interesting sum okay so here if you see this circuit here we have 10 volt voltage source here we have switch here we have one inductor and here we have one inductance okay so if you observe this circuit carefully here we have to find out this time constant and time constant is L equivalent by R for first order circuit okay but if you observe this circuit carefully here we have two inductance okay and these two inductance are not in parallel as well as series how because here you can see here we are not having a single current flowing if the single current was flowing through this two inductor we can say that this two inductance is in series but here we don't have a same current also here we don't have a same voltage also okay if both the inductance have the same voltage then we can say that two inductance are in parallel if they are same current then we can say these two inductance is in series but here in this case we don't have both of that okay so we can say this two inductance is neither in series and neither in parallel okay so let me tell you this is a circuit for second order rl network okay so the formula this l equivalent by rth is not valid for this circuit okay and as i told you for this circuit we have to go for laplace transform okay so let's do this first we have to convert this circuit into transform domain okay so this 10 will be converted to 10 by s this one henry inductance will be converted into l into s basically one into s this one entry also will be converted into s this one ohm as one ohm two ohm as two ohm okay so now we have to find out our time constant okay so for that let us assume that this node voltage as va and now we are going to apply kcl at this node okay so here we will have va minus 10 by s upon s plus va by 2 plus va by s plus 1 okay so basically this is what we will have okay now if we take va common then we will have 1 by s plus 1 by 2 plus 1 upon s plus 1 is equals to 10 upon s square okay now if we try to simplify basically if we take the lcm if we take the lcm we will have the same denominator basically 2 into s into s plus 1 okay so this is what i have written now to adjust this denominator we have to adjust the numerator also okay so here the numerator of this will be 2 into s plus 1 and the numerator for this it will be s into s plus 1 the numerator of this will be 2 into s okay so this is what i have written okay so this is your numerator this is your denominator and this is your right hand side part okay now if you observe this equation this s s will be cancelled and we will have this as a final equation as va 2s plus 2 plus s square plus s plus 2s upon 2 s plus 1 is equals to 10 by s okay now if you simplify this we will have s square plus 5s plus 2 upon 2 s plus 1 is equals to 10 by s now if we take this into this side and this into this side we will have va is equals to 10 into 2 s 20 s plus 1 upon s into s square plus 5 s plus 2 okay so this is what i have written now there are two ways to get your time constant okay so one way is to get your partial fraction and then take your inverse laplace transform then whatever you have e raised to minus t by tau this will be your time constant okay so basically this tau will be your time constant of this circuit okay but this is the lengthy processor okay instead of going this we will use our control system basics okay as we all know that the time constant is basically inverse of negative real roots okay so here we can see here we have roots as as equals to zero and 
we will have a two roots from this okay so let's find out the roots from this equation minus b basically minus 5 plus minus under root of b square minus 4ac so it will be 5 cos square basically 25 minus 4 into 1 into 2 is 8 upon 2a basically 2 into 1 okay so it will be minus 5 plus minus under root of 17 by 2 okay so this is the two roots which are in the left hand side okay so from this two roots we can get our two time constant okay so basically for second order rl network we will have two time constant okay which will be minus one upon root okay so here you can see we have root as minus five plus under root of 17 by 2 so the time constant will be minus up one upon minus five plus root 17 by 2 as our one time constant and the other time constant will be minus 1 upon minus 5 minus under root of 17 by 2 second okay so this is the two time constant for this rl network okay so we get to know that for first order rl network we will have one time constant for second order rl network we will have two time constant okay so you have to use your formula wisely okay for first order we will use this formula for second order we will move to the laplace transform okay let me tell you till now we don't have the question from second order rl network but now for second order rl circuit there is a high chances okay so be prepared very well okay so that's it for today thank you guys